Shut up and sit down. Business Bros is your show, where small business professionals just like you come to tell their stories. This podcast is for those who understand the number one rule in business, which is to be of service to others. Learn how today's professionals generate leads, what's working on social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of those who are out there doing the real work. And now let's welcome your hosts, Hernan Sias, the real estate bro with eXp Realty, the cloud-based brokerage where top producers reign, and James Sias, the insurance bro with Pipeline Insurance, making sure you are covered because there's a lot riding out there. And now here are the business bros. Recording. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. I'm short one bro, but I got a very special guest today. I got Mr. Evan Carmichael on the show today. Evan, welcome to the program. We got a, we got a new bro in the house. I appreciate We got a you. new bro. <laughs> new bro. Thank you for the love, man. It's great. All right, man. So uh, let's, let's hop to this. Um, I honestly want to know uh, a little bit about your background just to get things going. Like, where did you come from? How did you decide that you know, I'm going to be an influencer all of a sudden, or did it just like happen overnight? Cause people have this impression that, you know, all of a sudden you have millions of followers and your views, your views on YouTube go all through the roof. How does that happen to somebody? So I think your purpose comes from your pain. And I struggled so much in my first business that I wanted to then help other entrepreneurs not struggle as much as I did. And the, the start of that was me, after I sold my first company, I struggled a lot. Then I sold my business when I was 22, became a speaker, got asked to speak at a whole bunch of events just because I was a young entrepreneur success story kind of thing. Um, I transitioned that to having a website and then a YouTube channel, but I never had asked, influencer wasn't a thing, you know, I mean, I've had my YouTube channel for over 10 years. It, it was, it was different when I started. There was, there weren't many people crushing it on YouTube and definitely not thought leaders or business people. It was more stupid cats and people falling down stairs and <laughs> stupid stuff, entertainment. Um, but there, was, there wasn't a strong educational component to YouTube. I got on YouTube, one, because I like visual, I like, vi- I like learning through visuals more than anything else. Like I know we're recording the podcast here, but the fact that I can see you on video is better for me. If, if it was audio only, I'd, I'd have to really focus and, and you know, just close my eyes and pay attention because audio is the worst way for me to learn. And so I wanted to make video content that could help other entrepreneurs. Like there's gotta be other people like me. And so I made, I made videos on successful entrepreneurs. The first one I did was on Walt Disney. And then people also were asking me questions. And so I thought instead of writing out an email that might take me half an hour to respond to somebody, I'll just record a quick video and, and send it to that person. And maybe other people will see it too, but it was never, I'm going to go and build this channel with 2 million followers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, So I I think I just, I want to spread belief, man. I want people to believe in themselves more. I think that's, that's a, it's an epidemic. That's, that's a good little insight you had there though. I mean, let's, let's hover on that for a second. You said, you know, you would, you first, you did a report basically, right? You, you talked about somebody who had already done what many people aspire to do. And then you, because you put out that content, people naturally gravitated to learn about that specific individual and had general questions. And rather than you just doing a one-on-one answer the question, you kind of, that became a piece of content in and of itself. The answer to that question became, uh, you know, something that you put out there to answer a specific individual, but it could possibly connect to other people. That's something, I mean, that's a small little tidbit of information that, that people might glaze over. You know, you might be a type of person who generates a lot of attention and maybe you're spending time sending and typing it out in a DM. But what you're doing is taking an answer and understanding that it may affect more than one person. Yeah. And especially in the YouTube world, that piece of content you create will live forever. And so I made videos that are 10 years old that are still getting views now versus an an Instagram post that, you know, 10 days ago, nobody's looking at your content. Yeah. Or disappears in the story. Yeah. Yeah. And and most of whether the story and actually actually disappears in 24 hours or even just in the feed, everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of it. Nobody cares about what you posted 10 days ago. Nobody's Mm -hmm. paying attention. 
It's very in the moment where YouTube is the only platform where your content actually does live forever. And so, especially if you're talking about something that's evergreen kind of content, um, if you're talking about trends for 2019, 2020, okay, that's not going to have a super long shelf life. But most of the stuff that I talk about is, is evergreen kind of content. And so I, in answering these questions, felt like in five years, it's still going to be relevant. Like this problem this person's facing is still going to be relevant in the future. And so if I make this piece of content now, it can help a lot of people. But I never thought, I thought like in the hundreds, I never thought it would be, I would blow up and be an influencer. Like it didn't even exist. I wasn't that smart to predict where the future was going and say, this is my strategy to dominate the world. <laughs> um, but I did have a sense of, I want, I want my work to matter. I want to have an impact. I want to know that the, I want the, the things that I create to live forever. That's, that's deep. I mean, that's, that's the core of what uh, Believe Nation is all about, right? You want to, you want to be an, an influence in somebody's life. You want to shape or help shape somebody's life for the positive. And, you know, one, one of the first ways I came across you was actually through, um, through uh, Eric Thomas. So I was looking for stuff. I teach high school in the morning. I teach 17-year-old kids, usually the ones that are doing so hot in the academic realm. I teach a course called Financial Algebra. So I'm trying to prepare them for, you know, the real world type stuff. So nice. I'm looking for pieces of content that will really jive with the youth that that will engage them. And so I was looking for for some stuff, bumped into to, to ET, and it was actually one of your videos that you put together where it's a comp. Uh, compilation of a bunch of his stuff like the top 10 things that that you know et talks about um when did you decide to start using that sort of model to put out content because it was super useful i could have been digging for days and found a bunch of useful et information but you just had it consolidated in one spot yeah um and again i'm not that smart so i didn't i didn't know that this would be the future um but how it started was there was a buddy of mine mark Drager who made a blog post about Kanye West and Taylor Swift, that whole situation that happened. And, and it bothered me that people were still talking about it. However many years after Kanye interrupted her on stage, like, you know, great. Yes. Kanye did something stupid, but, but who cares? Like you should learn from Kanye. I've got Kanye up on my wall behind me. <laughs> the people who are, you know, podcast only. Um, I, I love learning from people. I think you can learn a lot from Kanye, even if you, even if you hate most of what he does. And so the first top 10 I did was on Kanye West to say, you can learn from this guy. Even if you disagree with most of him, you can still, you should learn from him. He, he, he went from being just a, a, a beats producer to being a rapper to selling, to winning more Grammys than anybody in history at his age, then becoming an entrepreneur. He, he uh, is friends with John Legend. And if you think that's already sounds a little weird, like John Legend is this, super nice, humble appearing guy who seems to be like the opposite of Kanye. And John Legend's real name is John Stevens. And so they're at a bar in Chicago and John Stevens is complaining that like, I've got this old school voice. I feel like this isn't my era. Like I, I'm, I belong in like the Sinatra era. And Kanye says, you should call yourself the legend. And John <laughs> Stevens says, I can't do that. What if I don't make it? I'm just getting started, right? And, and he convinced him and, and then John Stevens became John Legend because of Kanye. And that's belief, right? Like belief in your friends, right? You can learn something. Even if you hate Kanye, you can learn something from that on how to be a better friend. And so, you know, it's a question. Do I support the people around me enough? Am I supporting my friends enough? Can I believe in people more, right? Like anybody can learn from that video, even if you hate Kanye. And so I did a top 10 just on Kanye, just as a one-off, just to shove it to my friend's face. Mark, Watch his video, learn from him, <laughs> stop hating on him, right? Just try to learn, be open-minded, learn from him. And, um, and I never expected to keep going with it, but I did that one video and uh, people liked it. And they said, hey, can you do Jay-Z? Hey, can you do whoever? Can you do this person and this person? And then I said, okay, people like it. So I, I could probably do like once a week and that became twice a week and that became five times a week and that became the whole <laughs> thing. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of going from idea to action. Like you get an idea, don't judge the idea. Don't plan around the idea. Don't make it this giant thing. Just do something about it. Mm -hmm. I saw my friend Mark's post. It bothered me. And so I took this huge detour from what I was currently doing to make one video just to show my friend Mark. And, and then it became the whole thing. Like that's what I'm known for, DJing content. 
Well, right. let, me, let me ask you something about that, that detour, yeah. because, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I, I remember when I decided, I, you know, I'm going to do a video and I, I went to, uh, I live in San Diego. So we have the San Diego Comic-Con convention every year. And so yeah. I was like, you know, my business bros podcast is brand spanking you. Nobody knows who the heck it is. I'm going to go out and I'm going to interview people in costume. I'm going to ask them financial questions. I was like, I think that'd be fun. And so I made this video and it's like three minutes long, doesn't have a lot of ton of views or anything, but it was, it, it, three minutes and it took me like six hours to learn how to do this whole video thing. And so at that point I was like, well, maybe video is not for me. And I sort of backed away and then I ended up focusing more on the podcast and now I'm going back into video. I just released a parody by the way of it's tricky and it's, you know, goofy fun stuff. But now I'm looking at video as a different limelight and you were doing something in your life and you deviated from that and spent the time to make this top 10 video and it led to something else. How do you, how do you, how did you justify the time to do that? And how, what advice would you give somebody to say, look, if you have an idea, go for it, take that action. So one, I call it the 2% difference and that as soon as you get an idea, I trust that that idea came to me for a reason. Why am I thinking about this? I don't know. I'm not going to judge it. So I'm just going to do something. But the 2% difference is most of us use that time. You come up with an idea. How do we use that time? We plan, we strategize, we think, we research, we tinker, we make notes. And then you wake up tomorrow, a different person, and that idea is gone. And then you just add another list of things to potentially think about one day. That's how most people are. I want to do something immediately in the moment. The 2%. Instead of planning to get to 100%, what can I do right now for the first 2%? And then you just, you see how it goes. Like, I expect to suck. You should suck. Like your first video should suck, dude. Yes. You're gonna go to this Comic-Con, whatever, and ask people financial questions. They're gonna be awkward, you're gonna be awkward. You don't know anything about it. It's going to suck. Like expect it to suck. This is, this is where a lot of people fall down. They expect their first thing to be great. Dude, your first podcast sucked. Yes, absolutely. I, I, but like that's, it doesn't mean that you suck as a human. This is where people get messed up. You don't get the result you want, and so you feel that's a reflection on you. You feel bad. So you never want to touch it again. No, it just means you don't have the skill set. I think you yes. rock because you tried it, right? You yes. had the courage to go off and do it. Like, that's the story you should be telling to yourself. And then what, what should play in the back of your head is, did I enjoy this? Mm -hmm. Did I enjoy going to Comic-Con? Did I enjoy talking to these people? Did I enjoy? Because if you enjoy it and you get up and do it every day, you'll, you'll get good at it. You just will. You'll get better at it. And then you'll find a way to bring, it, bring results where I think people get too caught up on getting the results right away. When you go on a first date, the goal isn't to get married after the first date. It's like, do I want to go on a second date? And so I think people judge their ideas too much, are trying to be perfect too much, and they, they, don't, they don't love themselves for trying and failing. 100% agree. Where they want to go. Yeah, 100% agree. I think there's, there's also like two aspects of it. I think one is um, our own ego basically is what you're describing is getting in the way of whatever we want to do in life. And then the other thing is, because um, I do speak to a lot of entrepreneurs, they try to put uh, chasing the dollar first. Like, well, how am I going to make money off this when I'm first just initially getting started? And it, one of the things I try to, to say over and over again is, you know, um, when, when I'm trying to steer away from the word retirement and more towards the, 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 the de definition of success. Like I feel if you get up and you do something you love every single day and you make enough money to get by, be, but you get up every day because you don't have an alarm clock because you want to do that thing that you want to do on a daily basis, then is there really a time when you're going to stop working? I think, I think if you figure out that thing that you love to do and you find a way to uh, make money at it, and it's not some, you know, huge, big house with fancy cars or anything. Maybe it's just to get by, but you're doing what you love. To me, that's success. And that's, that should be something that people strive for versus I'm trying to make a million bucks. People are messed up on money. Uh, I think either you come from two schools of thought, most people. Some people think money is everything. It's the whole thing. I need to make a million dollars. That's, that's, the, that's success. Uh, when, when a new customer comes into your store or buys from you or is, is a lead coming in, you're thinking, that's my next suit. That's my next car. Like, you don't care about the human. You're just trying to make the money. But if you look at, at all of your heroes, whether it's Jobs or Kanye or Oprah or whoever, money is never the thing. It's never the number one thing. And there's most people who then will come from the other side to say money is the root of all mm -hmm. evil, right? The money is bad. 
It's not either. Like you need to learn to make money. You, you have to, even if you're a charity, you, if you can't make money, you don't grow your charity. You don't grow your impact. And so I like to say that money has to be in your top five, but it can't be number one. I love that. That totally it's makes sense. It's got to be your top sense. five. You need to learn how to make money. It's an important skill. It's a tool that you will use that, you, that allows you to have a huge impact. It just can't be number one on your list. It has to be something above it. 100%. I, I, I mean, I equate it to, to my, my own podcast. We did, uh, my brother and I sat down. We own an insurance agency together, uh, you know, and, and we sit down and we, we do basically the training talks that we have with our insurance agents. We were doing that for the first like 60, 70, 80 episodes. Nobody listened except for mom because mom loves us, right? And, uh, uh-huh. and, and it wasn't until my eight-year-old son said, dad, if you want uh, people to listen to your show, you have to get influencers on your show. And so we kind of shifted and we started to get people on the show to tell their stories, to share their experiences, to talk about the things that they struggled with and how they overcame those things. And all of a sudden, you know, the dynamic of the show, the, the, the audience shifted and it started going in the positive direction. And so I think that's one of those things where, you know, if, if, you start in the, if you're starting that podcast and you're putting that commission breath or that number one thing is money, then you're right. You're, you can get somewhere. It's just not going to get you far. And I think, you know, the reason why I love to do this every single day is because I get to meet people like you and I get to hear your story and you get to tell me about, you know, what things works for you. And I don't know if there's going to be one little piece of information that just clicks in my head or somebody who's listening is going to say, you know what, that is absolutely right. That's the thing that I needed to do. That's the little shift in my head. And all of a sudden that person goes out and I don't know, cures cancer, changes the world somehow. Yeah, I agree. I I think, I think there's still room though for like the things that the, the seed of why you started something is really important. You know, so you did that comic con fun thing. And then thought that it sucked and didn't get results. And now you're coming back to it in a different version. How many years later? Oh, it's the same year. It was almost exactly a year. A year. That's great. I mean, that's amazing. Most people, if they ever come back to it, it's like a decade later and you've you've lost all that time. Like imagine if, even though yours is shorter a year, imagine if you just spent that year, just kept going and doing it where you'd be right now. Oh yeah. It'd be, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so the same thing with the, like if you started your podcast as you and your brother sharing advice, your wisdom, may, maybe there needs to be a part of the podcast or, or a segment where you share your wisdom. Like maybe you don't just want to be Larry King and asking people questions. You mm-hmm. love learning. It's part of it. Amazing. Yes. But, but maybe you have a lot of great wisdom to share too, that it's- you're in the world of, of contributing. You just, just because it didn't work, doesn't mean that it won't work, right? It just means you need to get better at it. How do you yeah, get better exactly. at practice? You study, you model success, you keep doing it, right? So this is where people get trapped in success, right? Is that, okay, when I did a podcast for myself, it didn't work out, but then when I brought on influencers, it started working, so I'm just gonna keep repeating this thing. But then at some point, you could feel like you bought yourself a job because you keep having to do the same thing because you're not doing the thing that you still wanna do, right? Like you have the business bros the bros, not, not the third guest. The bros have a lot to share too. And if that's something that you feel like I've got knowledge too, I may not be as successful as some of my guests, but I know, I mean, why are you going and helping out the 17 year old kids? Cause you feel you've got value to bring. That's it's funny you say that. Cause uh, we've actually added a segment to the show called ask the bros. And so it's an opportunity for the guests to come on after they've shared their story to ask us pretty much any question, whether it relates to the, helping them in their particular business, what we see out in what we've done so far. And I mean, we've done it a couple of times and it's been awesome <laughs> because that's, I think that's exactly your, your, your speaking the truth there. There's a reason why we got into it in the first place and now we're finding a way to go back to it. Um, yeah. And we never really gave up on it. We just try to shift mediums like, okay, well, that didn't work. Let's try this a little bit different. This allowed us to continue to move forward. But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's one of those things where like every time I sit down at the end of the day and we sit down and talk about where we are, we really go back to how do we get back to giving the information that we want to give? How do we share the information that we initially got into? That makes all yeah. the difference in the world. Listen, maybe, maybe how often do you do your podcast? Every day. Every day, like maybe, maybe the Friday episode is you bring on a 17 year old kid and you coach them. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, and, and then let me see you. Like, what do you say? Hey, what are you struggling with? And then, you- and that's the whole level. You don't know what's going to come up and you just help them. Like, I think, I think you would crush that. 
And the first ones, again, will be awkward and like you're not quite sure what to do and the formula. But, but that could be like your favorite episode of the week. Yeah, that actually does make sense. That's really cool. I, I, I like that idea. It's funny because I've, I've, I've had some of the younger kids that, you know, they graduate, turn 18. I'm like, I'm not going to put you on the show when you're not 18 yet unless you get your parents' permission. But, right. uh, but uh, you know, they come on the show and they have zero skill when it comes to outside world so far. But they have a dream. They have an ambition. They, they, they have a view of where they want to go in life. And so we kind of sit down and break it up and, 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 you know, really dig deep into if this is what you want to do, these are the steps that you need to do to get there. Or at least these are the things you need to start thinking about. And, you know, you kind of really, you get into their mind a little bit and you dig a little deeper. You ask those why questions and you, you really figure out what is the real purpose for you trying to go in this direction. Cause sometimes they go in a direction because they're told that's the direction they're supposed to go in, but you dig a little deeper and you're like, Oh, well, you know what? You actually really care about this thing. And if I can help you really build something around that thing, you're going to be happier every single day. I think, I think you'd crush it. I think the first few episodes, you, you, you find your feet and figure it out and figure out a template and a format. But I think, I think, you'd, I think you'd do really well. And I think that would, that would help and inspire a lot of people who are feeling the same issues as that 18-year-old kid that you bring on. So tell me a little bit about um, moving on a little bit. How do you how do you uh, decide to write a book or write a memoir? A memoir. I mean, you we we bought a couple books from you. You were able to give them away. You're doing some public speaking. How do you transition from creating content to having a product or having a speaking engagement? So if you want to be a speaker, you have to speak. Like nobody's going to hire you to be a speaker if all you're doing is interviewing people. Makes sense. Right? Yeah. The interview. Yeah, I might true. hire you to interview somebody, but, oh, you have a message? What is it? Yeah, I help 18-year-olds figure out their dream and let them know it's possible and introduce them to the real world so they don't go out and fail, right? Like if that was your message, you could get hired to speak on that. But if you're not speaking on that through the content, your podcast, YouTube, or Facebook, wherever you put it, then, then nobody hires you to speak, right? So um, I get hired to speak not for my top 10 mashup content. I get hired to speak off the other videos that I make where people see me speak and they say, wow, this guy is, might be a good fit for our audience, right? So that's step one is you actually have to start creating the content that's inside here that you, you're already living and you're already teaching your kids every, every week when you go in and, and teach the class, but now putting that public so I can see, right? You can yeah. have a, an Instagram live show where people can just call in and you coach them live on the spot. Those are my favorite shows of all time. So, so that's the starting process. Like you want to get known for something, I need, I need to see you doing it. If you said, Evan, I don't want to do that. I want to be Larry King. I want to be better than Larry King. Like that's, I only want to interview people. It's a different path. Great. Don't do this. That sucks. But you don't. Like you can help people. You want to help people. So I need to see you helping people. And then you'll get hired to do more of that. Um, for the book, I never wanted to write a book. My agent said, I need a book. I'm like, dude, Steve, I don't need a book. It's, 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 it's a different era now. You don't need a book to open doors. I have my YouTube channel, right? I can open doors if I need to. But then when I was going through the one word process, that was my first book, Your One Word, I just felt it played better as a book than, than as a series of YouTube videos. I felt like it, it just, it was a better execution with a book. And so I think what you need to think about is your message, whatever you want to get out. Ideally, you can take it from different so you have a, you have a 30 second, you know, podcast intro version of it, or like an Instagram story, 15 second version of it. You can make it into a 10 minute YouTube video. You can make it into a 40 minute keynote speech. You can make it into a 300 page book. You can make it into a four day event. You know, you could take your message and expand and collapse depending on what the platform is. Um, I felt like I had enough content that it made sense for, for this version to be a book. And then it just becomes right now the book publishing industry is how big is your audience? Like if, if you want to get an advance uh, as a first time publisher, it's super difficult. You just need to have an audience and the bigger your audience is, the more likely you're going to get a yes. Yeah. You have more leverage that way. Yeah. So if you're bringing an audience, like if you keep building business bros and you can say, Hey, we get X number of downloads and X number of views and these are our, email, email subscriber list, right? If you're not doing that, like start ASAP because they care huge about email subscribers. Um, say, Hey, I've got a hundred thousand people on my email list. It makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah. The publishers. Now, another thing I noticed about you is you always got the, the black and yellow hoodie. 
right? How, how important is it, is it to carry your brand, to wear your brand, to be, to be you at all times? Um, to be you at all times, I think is, is super valuable. I think that was the, the whole idea of your one word is figure out what your core value is and then live it. So my one word is believe it's, it's what I, it's not a marketing strategy. It's who I am. Like I, I, I like, I like, I feel like Batman wearing this. I like it. It reminds <laughs> me to believe like my goal is believe in, in this interview. My goal, my intention is I want to help people believe more. I want your audience to believe more in themselves. I want you to believe more in yourself and where you can take things. It's always, I don't always execute my intention. Maybe I suck. Maybe this is the worst interview of all time for you. I don't know, but it's always my intention going in to create a belief experience. And so I care less about just the branding and the appearance, and I care more about the actual being of it, if that makes sense. So yes. like, I create this background. I have, the, I guess for the audio listeners, they can't see my background, but in the, my office, I've got a picture of my parents, Steve Jobs, E.P. Janini, Howard Schultz, Kanye West. Uh, I have this imposing, these giant pictures on the wall. It's for me. It's not that it looks nice for my studio. I like walking into this office and seeing them on the wall. It means something. This is belief to me. People often ask me, hey, how do I buy those, buy those pictures from my office? Like, well, it's my parents. <laughs> <laughs> my parents hanging up in here. It's a little weird. Um, so I think... I th I think it, what comes across as a good marketing strategy is actually authentic living. So I think if you figure out what you stand for and then you, you just are that, then it, it'll come out naturally with your marketing, with your, with your branding, with your clothing, with your environment, with you know, everything that you're doing, as opposed to just thinking, okay, what, is, what do I want people to think about me? It's doing the hard work to think about, okay, who do, who do I actually want to be? And then having the courage to live it. Like the yellow, like the, my hoodie, um, I wear it at, at black tie events. Like if I'm speaking at an event, it's a black tie. I'm wearing this. I'm wearing fancy pants, but this, right? Which, which gets me in the hot water sometimes, <laughs> right? But I'm not wearing a tuxedo. This is what I'm going to be wearing going into the event. I mean, they, I, I'm trying not to be disrespectful. They hired me to be there. Um, but that's, that's, this is who I am. This is belief. I love that. I love that. I, uh, I, I, I would imagine when you walk into a place, do you, do you tell them ahead of time, by the way, this is how I'm going to, this is me, you get me. Or, or when you get some slack like that, or, or is it something like, well, oh snap, we already hired him. He's here. Just let him go. Um, I think people already have a little bit of, I mean, there's a hiring me to come to an event. They have some context on me. Um, I think if I'm, I'm working with an agency that we haven't worked with before, I'm, I'm paying careful attention to what they're asking and seeing how rigid they are with their rules. I think the thing with me is I do things my way. Uh, I want to work with you and, and, and um, give you the best result, but I'm, I'm doing it in a way that I'm going to crush it for you. Like while we're together, I'm going to give you my best and, and I'm going to crush it. And so anything that is like a block to that, I try to, maneuver through so if they need me to say some like people give me a script i won't read a script like it's gonna suck you don't want me to read a script you don't want to send me the questions in advance for this interview and i have a scripted answer and i read you don't want that because i suck off a script i can't memorize lines and and when i do it's super fake and inauthentic and you can see it so that that worries brands like well, what are you gonna say i don't know but it's gonna be around this <laughs> it's crush it. like let me do what i do I'm great at this. I'm going to give you a fantastic result, but you got to let me do what I, what I, what I want to do in my way. And, and that takes courage to stand up when somebody wants you to do it their way. But it's like, no, like this is actually going to get you a better result. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I mean, here we're going to finishing up, finishing up our time. So uh, ultimately uh, how much weight would you give in being authentic to your con to your content versus targeting and creating content specifically for an audience? Uh, at the end of the day, you have to do both. I think if you, you have to do what you love, like that is the foundation of everybody's success. But if you only do what you love and there's no market for it, then you have a hobby. It fills the soul. You've got a hobby. Awesome. If you're only chasing opportunity, you're going to lose. If you're starting a podcast because it's the hot thing to do for 2019, you've, you've lost. Because the people who love doing podcasts will destroy you. 
If you're going up against people who love doing the craft and you're just doing it because it's a strategy, you're going to lose. And so it has to be that combination of I love doing this and there's a demand here, right? I love making the top tens. I love it. I love doing the first one on Kanye, but I love the process of it and people wanted more. I should keep doing it. There's been a lot of series that I've loved doing that didn't work out. There was no demand for it and, and I stopped doing it, right? But I tested it. I, I saw it through and see if it could work or not. And so uh, if you're only targeting an audience, um, you're going to lose. Like, don't do it. it it's a short-term path and you should be doing something else. Um, and if you're doing something that you love, you have to figure out, just like I said, money has to be in your top five. You love doing this thing. Awesome. How can you make it make money? How can you find people who care about this thing so that you can make money in the process? Of doing it? Evan, thank you very much for your time today, man. Really, really appreciate you coming on the show, uh, giving me, uh, you know, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes of your time uh, and sharing it with everybody what you know, just, just the truth, because, you know, that vulnerability, that, that ability to say who you are and really not care, but really care <laughs> about what other people think is, is a unique quality that I'm, I'm noticing in people that are, that are doing it, that are making it happen. You genuinely care about other people and yet you don't care enough to speak your own truth. So thank you very much for coming on and sharing. Uh, you know, if there's anything I could ever do for you, I know, I know we're far away from each other, but if there's anything I can ever do for you, uh, feel free to Friday reach out. Show. Friday one-on-one with 18 year olds coaching them. All right. You got yeah, it. Man. I'm going to have a, a, I'm going to have a whole onslaught of kids that are going to be coming here in the next send month. Me, send seven. me the first episode. I want to see it. All right. We'll do. Love it, man. <laughs> And then I'll send you the uh, 10th or 20th so we can compare. I love it. (laughs) Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you interested in being on the show? Are you looking to sell your home or have a business that needs insurance? Reach out to the Business Bros via email, businessbros at csfirst.com right now. Or click on the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening. And remember to subscribe and share the podcast with the business professionals who you think would benefit from the show.